tuberculous arthritis. Did you know that tuberculous arthritis accounts for only 1% of all cases of TB and 10% of extrapulmonary cases? However, its lack of awareness, insidious onset, varied clinical presentation, lack of characteristic early radiographic findings, and often lack of concurrent pulmonary involvement usually cause a delay in its diagnosis, increasing the risk for irreversible joint damage in afflicted patients. This video thus aims to educate you by presenting TB arthritis symptoms, common causes, outcomes, diagnosis, and treatment to aid you in any possible future encounters as a practicing physician. Extrapulmonary TB of the joints typically manifests as chronic monoarticular arthritis. Chronic means it may have existed for at least six weeks already. Monoarticular means having only one affected articular joint, and arthritis suggests pain and swelling. TB arthritis usually involves the weight-bearing joints of the body, commonly the joints of the hips and the knees. However, it can also present virtually in any other joint. Affected joints present with marked inflammation, particularly pain and swelling, as well as possible loss of function which progresses over time. Latter stages of the disease can present with local deformity and restricted range of motion. Acquisition of TB arthritis can be classified as primary or secondary. Bone infection of M. tuberculosis happens during mycobacteremia of primary infection. Because the vertebra and growth plates of long bones have a rich vascular supply, they are more prone to infection by hematogenous spread of M. tuberculosis. In primary TB arthritis, infection from the bone is then spread to the joints, causing inflammation and joint damage. In secondary TB arthritis, infection is acquired through direct inoculation of mycobacteria after a traumatic injury or a surgical procedure such as joint arthroplasty. If detected and treated at an early stage, there can be significant preservation of the structure and function of the affected joint. Around 90 to 95% of patients achieve healing with near normal function. On the other hand, unrecognized or untreated TB arthritis can result to fibrous ankylosis, which is a proliferation of fibrous tissues that reduces range of motion, joint space narrowing, and bony erosions. Eventually, this will result to joint destruction. A high index of suspicion is necessary for the diagnosis of TB arthritis. The gold standard in the diagnosis is histopathology, and this is done by performing an open biopsy, testing positive in about 80 to 90% of cases. Under the microscope, the synovial biopsy will present with hallmark granulomatous features such as shown in this picture. There may also be lymphocytes and giant cells showing caseation. In an X-ray film, classic TB arthritis will show articular osteoporosis, peripheral osseous erosion, and narrowed interarticular space. Another diagnostic tool to diagnose TB arthritis is synovial fluid analysis. This is the routine test done. Synovium will appear as turbid and is usually non-hemorrhagic. Acid fast stains are not reliable since only 19% of tests are positive for this. A culture of mycobacterium tuberculosis can also be done for PCR detection. The mainstay treatment for TB arthritis would be similar to pulmonary TB. The usual treatment regimen is two months daily in or intermittent administration of isoniazid, rifampicin, perazinamide, and ethambutol, followed by isoniazid and rifampicin for the succeeding 10 months. Splints may be used for a short time to relieve acute symptoms and for a long time to prevent deformities of infected extremities. Surgical treatment is usually limited and only indicated in severe cases. Thank you for listening.